everyone. So welcome to the second part of chapter four, uh, which is all about importing and exporting data. Now, given the difficulty of filming all of this, uh, because it would require me, it, it requires me to go through not only MATLAB, but also my file explorer and notepad, etc., etc. Long story short, um, I do not have the technical know-how uh, for making this transition extremely smoothly. A Twitch streamer, I am not. So, um, because I am not skilled enough with uh, OBS, which is what I'm using to record, uh, we're, uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is follow along very carefully with this video and in your textbook. And what you should do is you should see, you know, what changes, like what these commands are doing and, you know, see for yourself how different options are really, um, how, how the different options, uh, different things that I do manifest on your computer. So with that being said, let's talk about how to import and export data. So probably the most simple way of importing and exporting data are the save and load commands. So if you want to save the variables that you want, uh, like the variables in your workspace, you can just type in save and then a file name. So I'm going to do blah dot txt or I'm just actually going to call it blah like so and it's going to save now the file that it actually saves to uh, one second I have to actually go there in my computer because I did not uh, was not prepared for this as I thought I was uh, all right so it saves as a dot mat file which is a proprietary MATLAB file. And if you try to open it with a text editor, you're going to get a bunch of gibberish. Uh, the reason why is because MATLAB only likes you uh, using its files with um, MATLAB, with the, uh, the, with this paid software and that it doesn't like to offer for free. But what the dot mat does is it actually saves not only the variable values, but also the variables itself. So then, if you want to load that back in, I'm going to type in clear to get everything to get rid of everything. If you want to load it back in, you would type in load and the file name. So just like with uh, creating files, like what we did with F open, um, it's going to assume that it's going to save those files by default in the current working directory. So mine is in my current working directory, the, the folder that I made specifically for this video. Uh, if I try to load blah like this, all of a sudden, you'll see that the workspace becomes populated again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear everything. If I type in who, there's nothing to find. That's perfect. If I load in blah again, it's going to retrieve everything that I had saved, which is the values for X, Y, and Z. And just like that, we have the values for X, Y, and Z. So now if I do... Um, a equals 23, B equals 46, that kind of stuff. And then I type in clear and load again at blah. It's still only going to give, give uh, X, Y, and Z. And specifically, it will only give the values of X, Y, and Z at the time that we saved them. So you can think of it as sort of like a save state or, you know, if, if any of you are active video gamers, I imagine I have at least one in my class. Um, if any, but yeah, if any of you are active video gamers, you can think of it as a specific save point where any changes you make after that save point don't get reflected if you uh, go back to that previous save. So that's sort of what's going on here. Except for the fact that if we also here, I'll do clear again. Except for the fact where if I do something like A equals 23, B equals 46, stuff like that, and then I load from blah. Uh, whoops. I should load from blah the string. Then it adds X, Y, and Z on top of A and B. So I guess maybe the video game metaphor wasn't the most accurate, but you know, this is what it does. It it saves and loads as a proprietary file that associates the name of the variable with the value contained in that variable. All right, so let's say we want to save specifically X and Y, but not Z. So what I'll do is I can type in save the same file name, so blah, X and Y, like that. 
So I'm going to overwrite the original blah save I made with only X and Y. So Z's value is going to get thrown out completely. Um, oops, my bad. It should be X and Y in strings like this. So the string named X and the string named Y. So what you're actually doing is you are presenting MATLAB with the strings that represent the names of the variables that you're trying to save. So we're saving X and Y like this. Then if I clear everything, basically what I've done is I've overwritten the blah file that gets saved. I'll load blah again. And all of a sudden we only get X and Y. So out of all the variables that we had, A, B, X, Y, and Z, we only saved X and Y. Now here's another cool thing. I have X and Y saved in blah, but let's say I only want to load X out of blah. I don't want Y at all. It, well, you can also pass in the names of variables into load. So like this, and will only give us whatever value was saved in blah, um, whatever value is named X, which in this case is 23. So it actually gives you a lot of really, really cool, um, like really cool ways of working with saving and loading data. So there are other ways of saving and, and importing all sorts of data in really cool ways. Um, you're not just limited to saving and loading using MATLAB's commands. So for a uh, full explanation of that, basically I want you to read section 4.5 on your own. Uh, so th that is on page, starting on page 114 in your textbook. What that's going to do is that actually tells us how we can actually import and export data from and to Excel sheets, among many other forms. So this is going to be really nice when, say, we're trying to use MATLAB to make some automations that have to do with large data files that already exist in Excel files. We don't want to, ha we don't want to have to type all that out by ourselves when it already exists in some really large Excel file. So it'll be super useful for us when we want to, um, basically when we want to work with large existing databases using MATLAB in order to do computations or really automate any sort of other functions. So basically um, MATLAB has a whole bunch of stuff about working with Excel, uh, working with uh, MATLAB's import wizard, which import and export wizard, which are really powerful tools for figuring out how you want to import and export data. So take a look at that. Um, and yeah, that'll be the end of this video. I know this one was a little bit shorter, so thank you for bearing with me.